Hi everybody, welcome to the card of the day. Zooming in, don't get dizzy. Um, it is Tuesday and um, I hope you're having a good week. I hope you are. Uh, here, uh, today's card, you know, I always forget to say, if you want a reading, there's my website. You can just Google that. Um, so today's card is the Two of Pentacles. And it's a really good card to learn with because it's pretty simple the way it looks. Um, it is, uh, first of all, we see he is a juggler. And is he a juggling two pentacles? Pentacles we always know as earth or things or coins. So that's to be thought of as money. So sometimes this card has to do with money. He is juggling his money. He is actually keeping it within the confines that he is supposed to. So when this comes up in money, it has to do with budgeting, usually successfully. Um, it also has to do with two. He is juggling two things. This is the card of affairs when someone is married and seeing someone else or seeing two people up and down. Um, we see the ship in the background. That means it has to do with commerce or business. It can be good at navigating business and money. And we also see the up and down. I always talk about water in the subconscious and what's going on underneath. So this has a lot of waves to it. So it's kind of that unbalance, you know? This card comes up, uh, think of the two going up and down. It can come up when somebody's bipolar. Um, it can come up when somebody is um, bisexual. Um, it kind of, think of your twos and your bis. That's when it comes up for. It is a little bit, sometimes we look and we see the hat. He's wearing like a goofy hat. So we can put that into place. Like I said, when you're reading tarot cards, it kind of depends what you tend to zoom in and what cards are around that. What occurs to you when you do that reading. This color brown is always thought of as leather, which means um, leather can be that there is... Uh, uh, it's he's not poor he's got something that uh, and this is where you can get into where someone will ask you a question and you look at the new card and you go well what is that about somebody might ask me if um, uh, if they should get a car and I'll just pop, happen to pop into the leather just that'll be what pops into my head and I'll go oh this is good because it's made to wear this card's gonna be around a long time so anyways there's your little tarot card lesson here is the way I zoomed in on it um, I have uh, been very aware of my thoughts lately, and it is amazing how much time uh, I spend on uh, BS or other people. This morning I got up and I was thinking about someone, um, about a, something that happened in a club years ago, which wasn't a positive experience. And I was like, why would I be wasting any time on that? Why would that come up? All kinds of questions. And I think that we exhaust ourselves with our own thoughts. Um, we repeat the same things over and over, these destructive thoughts, they get in a cycle and it feels easy. I've had a couple of clients lately, over and over, I've been, they're very young and I've, they think they're not in charge of their thoughts. They're like, yeah, but that's just how it is in my head and that's how it goes. And I'm always like, oh, if you could learn to break those patterns now, it will be so useful. So we need to stop repeating these destructive thoughts and understand that we do have control over this. And here's a little exercise that um, I do. This is what I do before I meditate and it helps a lot. And I thought, I gotta do this in life in general. In yoga, when you're balancing, you choose a point on the wall or somewhere in front of you that is a dristi. That's what they call it. It's a point of focus. And when you don't move your eyes and you keep your eyes on that dristi, you don't fall over. And I was thinking, I need like a mental dristi. Uh, when I meditate, it's simply a place I go to where I'm alone and then it turns into light. So what would be your mental dristi? Take the last compliment that someone gave you that really makes you happy. Okay, not too big, not crazy. Um, positive point of focus, perfect. Lori always put words perfectly for me. Um, the And that's what I want, so that whenever I feel that, uh, going to someplace negative, I can go right to that positive point of focus or dristy. And so here is your mantra of the day to start that. The thoughts I juggle will be of the best outcome. 
okay so whatever your um, and that can also be a future thing if you don't like a compliment go to a future thing the thoughts I juggle will be of the best outcome we're also a Karen is kind-hearted there's my Christy <laughs> thank you Lori I'll use that today um, and and uh, uh, that is so sweet um, the uh, oh, did you ever notice how easily we are ready for disappointment? Like this situation this is gonna go bad. Don't be happy or be disappointed. No, no, no. The thoughts I juggle will be of the best outcome. All right. We don't want to have too much importance on something. But here's what I'm thinking. Uh, I don't want to sit here and go. I'm not gonna owe a lot in taxes. I'm not gonna owe a lot in taxes because I am going to. But I'm gonna be. My thought would be, hey, everything's gonna be okay after my taxes are paid. How about that? Why is why do we never have that thought? Why do we always have? Oh, I'm gonna have to cut back. I'm gonna have to. Ah. No, my everything's gonna be okay after I pay my taxes. The thoughts I juggle will be of the best outcome. Give it a try, everybody. The thoughts I juggle will be of the best outcome. There's a habit you need to get. Yes, shift it. Yay! Thanks, Lori. <laughs> All right, everybody. Positive shift today. That positive shift will be positivity to the country and then to the world. The thoughts I juggle will be of the best outcome.